Join our free Badminton Academy with private online coaches and custom training plans. Link down below. Welcome to the Ultimate Smash Guide, the series where we teach you everything you need to know about mastering your smash. Today we'll be teaching you the five grips that you need to know to hit every smash variation. So show some support with a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you at the end of the video. First, we're gonna be showing the grip for our standard straight smash. Now, in order to do this, we're just gonna be doing a neutral grip going in. So how does a neutral grip look like? We're gonna have the racket vertical, and just from here, like we're handshaking someone, putting our palm in, and then just slightly, gently placing our fingers over, and this will be our neutral grip. Now, when we're gripping this in our straight smash, what we want to be doing is generating the power more with our index finger gripping forward and pronating as we're hitting with this grip, and that will help us generate power in our straight smash. One small thing that Paul could have done better is to focus his power onto the contact point a little bit more. And that would mean when he's gripping his racket, that power generation is a lot smaller, so less in his arm and more in the grip of the racket and also following through on that smash. The second grip you'll need is for the inward slicing smash. So usually it'll be in this position where we hit a slicing shot outwards cross court. Now the grip you need for this is a mini bevel grip. So it's kind of similar to our neutral grip, but slightly just turning it to the right a little bit. So our racket face will face more inwards when we're hitting. And when we're turning to the right, our power that we're generating, instead of using more of our index fingers, we are now using more of our three fingers here to grip inwards on our swing. So when we smash, it'll face this direction because we're hitting a slice and our power can still be generated going out that way. Overall, that was pretty good. Not much to say on that one. Just one small thing to improve on in terms of consistency of angle is making sure that your wrist cuffs all the way down for that angle and you follow all the way through on the shot so that your angle is the same every time. The third grip that you need is the bevel grip for the reversed overhead smash shot. Now, on this smash shot, we need to slice outwards a little bit and as you'll see, our rack face is facing outwards that way on the contact port. So in order to do this grip, we come in on a neutral grip again, but this time instead of turning in, we turn out. Do you see where this in between the vertical and the flat part is? We wanna put our thumb right in between there so that when we face our racket, our racket can be facing out on contact point. Now, the power you want to be generating here is going to be a mix, a combination between your index fingers and your thumb, pulling, pushing, both forward as you're contacting the bird into your reverse slice smash. One thing to focus on when you're doing this is to make sure that your contact point is really in front of you. If you have it behind you, it's hard to bring it down. So keep it in front of you and also reach up to hit that smash. The fourth grip you're gonna need is the tap smash grip. Now for this, it's going to be still in our neutral grip, but instead of holding our racket too far back, we're gonna hold our racket near the center of the grip, the handle. Why this is important is because tap smashes are super short and super quick. That's why we need to come up and have a very small and quick swing for our tap smashes. If we were to hold it too far back, we need to have to generate too much power with our arm and our tap smashes will become more like full smashes. One thing to focus on when you're doing your tap smashes is after you tap to still follow through forward so that your shots will come down. Otherwise, your shots will be very high and floaty in the air. And the last grip that we need is like we said in the previous, the full smashes. Moving our racket handle all the way to the back, this will help us generate maximum momentum because you'll see the difference when you're holding in the back versus when you're holding in the front. Up here, the racket is so light. 
but back here you can generate more power carrying through. So when you want to do that full smash, you can move your racket handle a bit more to the back and generate a little bit more power with your arm and whole body torso turning forward into your smash. Not much feedback in terms of him on that video, but one thing you can focus on is still generating your power, focusing on this instead of using your whole arm and swinging too loose. Those are the five grips you need to hit every Smash variation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video in our new Ultimate Smash Guide series. If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on that notification bell.